better. She's in it's kind of noisy out there. Inside here, this is my studio. It's more quiet. You know, I read way back years ago that if you want to do like a podcast or you want to do some recording like for podcasts, things like that, that your vehicle is perfect for that because of the sound in here. So this is my studio. Just pretend like I'm a YouTube creator who lives in a house and this is in my bedroom. I have a dedicated bedroom. But, and I think it's kind of pretty in here, don't you think? I'm Minivan Lee and I have lived in my minivan for seven years now. Now, most of you know <laughs> what's been going on in my life over the past year and especially over the last four months. And I hope you don't mind, but there's been so much going on inside of me, so much revelation that I debated on whether I even wanted to share this with y'all. But I know that you out there, most of you, you've been following me for a very long time. And I did get a comment yesterday that I'll talk about it towards the end that I understand that you know, you know kind of what's been going on with me. And you've been, you've been sensing this all along and even analyzing it, right? Okay, so I did take some notes because there's so much I want to tell you. Okay, if you don't know, um, I was in a relationship for three years with somebody and um, I'm probably about six years older than I am. And he started the nomad life and we started traveling together. Well, three years later, um, we broke up. And I'll tell you, it's been very, very, very difficult. I I'll admit it. Um, I've done some research on it. Did you ever think about something and talk about something and your phone hears you? So it sends you all these things in your feeds that relate to that? Well, oy vey shmir, that's been happening to me. And I've been really looking at what it's what all these messages are and learning so much, even with a couple of TED Talks. They've been in my feed talking about losing a loved one, whether it's through death or a breakup, okay? That it is literally one of the hardest things for a human to go through, okay? So I've been going through a lot of this. And even before that, there was a lot of tears. So I'm just going to say, I'm going to put it out there that I have to drink a lot of water because I'm losing it through here, okay? Now, um, but through that, this is what I want to talk about. Not to, oh, I'm so sad. That's not the point. I knew in the back of my mind, I knew in my heart that I'm going to come out ahead. When you are in that much pain and tears, I mean, even C.S. Lewis talks about that in his lectures and his books that through, through pain and through hurt, we grow, we grow. So I knew through all of this, I was gonna grow. So what I have been doing over the past, especially, well, really the past four months, I've been sort of in a cocoon, you know? I've isolated myself and sort of have gone inward um, with family and some friends, but for the most part, to myself and to you. You guys saved my life. You really did. By being able to talk to you and doing my videos every single day. Oh yeah, you guys were instrumental in this. But I feel like there's transformation going on within me. And this is what I want to talk about to never be afraid of the pain, never be afraid of getting through the pain, of working through it. Because in the end, you're gonna come out of that cocoon, you're gonna be a whole transformed person because he's gonna help do that. I do feel led to be isolated somewhat and be in, go inward, go inward. 
And what I finally then had to do, um, ultimately, is go no contact with this person. I just, no contact. So that I really could go inward and um, not be influenced by words or, you know, actions, things like that. So, to me, I wanted to tell you this because this is, the ju to me, this is the juice of life. This is what, um, to go from tears to transforming. Oh my goodness. So it's come to the point, and this is one of the reasons I have to talk about this, because of what's going on around me. I feel like I am in just a little bit higher vibration. I'm working on higher vibrations, a higher level, because of what's happening right? So I'm going from tears to transforming. And so I would recommend, first of all, my first recommendation is that you are in pain. Feel it. I mean, go for it and just feel it. It hurts so bad. I mean, they even talk about that in, in one of the TED Talks, that romantic love is really creates dopamine in the back of your brain. There's a little part in your brain where love is very addicting. And then on the flip side, if there's a breakup, that's also as addicting. You're constantly wanting that dopamine. So what you're doing is you're constantly thinking about that person. They're always in your thoughts. They're always somewhere in your thoughts. So this has been my transformation, learning about this. I do have a psychology degree. It's a bachelor's degree. So my daughter is a, a, a psychologist, my second daughter. And she, um, so she went a lot higher than I did. But we have this background. And I also am, I love to do research. I love to learn new things. What I'm going through, I want to learn about them. So I kind of felt like I wanted to talk about this. Okay, so let's talk. Okay, well, yesterday I told you a story. I've over the past four days, I have literally been in solitude. It's been raining. There's really nowhere to go. I can't get out in the park. I can't talk to people. And I kind of went inward. I mean, it's raining, so I really don't want to go outside. But I found after like the fourth day, I was kind of freaking out. I'm like, my inner, my inner self said, I need um, I need some human contact. I really do. My daughter's um, really busy right now. Uh, my son works all the time. Um, friends are kind of like busy right now. And um, I really felt very lonely. I don't usually feel that. And I actually put it out there. I'm like, Lord, I feel very lonely right now. And right now, one of the problems is my tribe is in Quartzsite right now. But I've kind of held back. I'll be going there in just a little bit. But I've held back from it just because of, you can only imagine why. So, I knew, and, and they, I've read that being lonely in solitude, and I know a lot of you are out there, in solitude is as bad for your health as, as smoking a pack of cigarettes. So I thought, oh my gosh, okay. So I had this idea, go park where I know it's safe and get on the streetcar and go. Go somewhere where you're gonna be around people, not in your van. It did say that it wasn't gonna rain, right? It said it wasn't gonna rain. And, uh, but I'll tell you in the afternoon it did, I got caught in the rain, but if you look at yesterday's video, I really recommend you watching it. There was an instance where I got to meet somebody new and sit down and talk to him for two hours. He's not my age. He's a lot younger than I am. He's really the age of my oldest daughter. And But the circumstances, he said he flipped me off because I was taking film and he thought I was filming him. So he literally saw me come into the cafe and he followed, he parked, followed me in. And he heartfeltly apologized because he thought I saw it. I probably didn't see it because of window reflection. I, I, I was busy. I was busy filming like murals and things like that. So he almost was in tears. And I, he was very sincere. I did not feel any danger. 
And I said, well, do you want to have coffee with me? And so we did. We talked for two hours. We watched the rain come down again. And we were sort of stuck there. And we were talking about everything. He's sort of a, he's sort of an artist type like I am. And he does work in theater. He works behind the scenes in theater. So I'm very interested. What is the point of this story retelling it again? Because if you go to yesterday's video, I'll talk about it in length. This is going to be a long video, by the way. So sit back. I promise I'm going to entertain you with these really higher thoughts. Okay, don't go anywhere. Watch it all the way through. I, I, I challenge you to do this. With this new intuition that I've been feeling, a lot has been going on. With this fella, I realize, as I'm sitting there talking to him, I'm realizing that this is, this was meant to be. This was guided. That he, this fella needs to talk to you as much as you need to talk to him. He needed somebody to encourage him. He said that he had a conversation with his mother and it kind of upset him. So, you know, he had some family issues going on and we talked about his sibling and, um, you know, where he is in the family and what his enjoyment is. And I kind of was pointing things out for him like, well, this sounds like this is what you really, this is what you strive for. And he needed somebody to help guide him in that. And of course it helped me because I was getting my socialization. So for two hours and when it was over and I got back into my van, I mean, it brought tears to my eyes because I did not need to do anything except get off of sitting back here and feeling lonely, get in my van, drive to a, a place and, and go among people that the whole universe sort of guided me towards this person, clashed us together. To me, that was phenomenal. And it was, it was a lot of fun. And I realized these things, this is not coincidence. Now, here's another thing. Last night, I woke up at like 2.30 in the morning. Two, actually, I woke up around 2. But I, I sort of laid there. And I was thinking, well, I'm going to leave an audio message for my friend. He's, um, he's in another country right now and, you know, a uh, really good friend. And I've had, he's been my friend for about three years now. And he had recently broken up himself with his girlfriend. So we're kind of like, you know, helping each other out just a little bit. And I thought about him and then I thought, well, I'm going to get up. I mean, I'm wide awake. I'll leave a little message for him. And I looked and he left me a message two minutes previously and I'm like okay okay so we talked just briefly just a couple of um he, he told me I read what he had to say and then I messaged it back and then I, I needed to get back to sleep which I did and I said I can't believe I was thinking about you and then this so there's all this newfound intuition going on but here's the kicker I wanted I wanted to relay this that I know this is from what I've been going through. I know it. I know it's uh, 200%. This is because I have cleansed myself and I'm at just a little bit higher plane right now. I'm at a little bit higher vibration and I know where it's coming from. Okay. I don't know what day it was. I don't know, but I was at the gym and I was, I remember it was a flashbulb moment. <clears throat> I was doing the pulleys. I had one here and one pier. I was working on my pecs. And it felt like somebody threw a sadness ball at me. I mean, it hit me. It was an emotional thing that literally was like somebody tossed it at me and hit me. And I just start crying. I mean, tears was streaming down my face. This full-blown sadness, like weeping sadness. And I was just, and I thought, I've cried at the gym before these past few months. So who cares? If somebody sees me weeping, who cares? I mean, a lot of people are going to see me weeping, right? 
So I just kept going. I didn't care. And then I got this message and it was my friend and he on the phone, he was kind of weepy too. And I, on, on his audio message, he got some bad news from his ex-girlfriend. So I actually walked out of the gym and left him another message, gave him a little bit of advice and told him what happened to me. I don't know if the sadness was from him. I kind of don't think so, because listen up. That night I had a dream. Well, it was early morning dream before I woke up and it was, I still can imagine, I still can walk through my dream right now. It was so real. I was at somebody's house and one of my relatives and then I was walking, I was leaving, but I was walking and it, it got kind of weird, like dark and it was down a dark slope. And all of a sudden I looked and there was a pit. It was like 12 feet wide. And I remember I almost fell into it. it was, seriously, it was scary. I almost fell into it. And all of a sudden, there was this big dog. And it just fell into the pit and landed at the bottom. The dog, I remember looking down thinking, oh my God, what are we going to do? I mean, somebody's going to have to rescue. And, I'm, and I actually remember going through the process. Now, how are we going to rescue this dog? How are we going to rescue him? He didn't, the dog didn't look up at me at all. It was just down there. There was mud. There was pockets of water. There were big rocks down there. And it was pretty, it was, I see, I don't know distance very well, but I don't know how deep it was. It was deep enough that I couldn't have ever crawled out of it and the dog was never going to get out of it. But yet it, I could still see the dog down there. And I remember feeling bad for the dog. Well, the next thing I knew, I'm hanging on the side ready to fall. I don't know. It just instantly I was there. And the, the rock that I was hanging on to was huge, but it, it was big, and but it was smooth. So there was no way I could get a grip on it. And I remember at that time, I thought, I'm dying. I'm going to die. I mean, I'm n nobody's ever going to find me or the dog. And I, I woke up. I was about to go. I mean, there was no way I could hang on. I knew that. I was resolved. I didn't like it. Oh, no. I mean, I guess I went through near death. I, it was that It was that dramatic. And I thought, oh, my God. So you all can, uh, you know, you all can um, interpret it any way you want. Maybe you know something more than I do. I've kind of got it figured out. So the next day, it's in the afternoon, the next day, in the afternoon, Max, my friend Max Dollarite, messages me and said, I don't know if you've heard Lee, but Abby died yesterday. Okay. So I said, well, thank you for telling me that because I'm not in contact with, with um, him. Um, so, yeah. Um, I thought, oh, that's really sad. I mean, yeah, felt bad. And I did thus, a couple of days later, do a video where I gave my condolences. So, um, but it all started coming to me. I thought that probably wasn't my friend where that I think that was the moment that Abby passed when I was at the gym. Abby passed and I was feeling that and probably his sadness, you know? I mean, cause it hit me like, oh my God, what, what, what happened? What, you know, where did this come from? And tears are just coming down. Well, it didn't hit me about the dream until that night. And I thought I was talking to my daughter and I went, oh my gosh, you got to hear this dream. I think I know. And yeah, I think that was Abby. I am because I was, I was close to her and I think I was one of the few people that was, you know, maybe trying to train her um, during that time. And, and um, you know, because I, I, somebody had mentioned, well, it might have been Abby letting you know that she passed. And I was thinking, oh, I, I don't know about that. Abby, did she like me or not? But I realized yesterday that I had this newfound 
interpretation of that that I think it was. I do think it was. And Abby did like me. And I don't know why she passed. She was only nine years old. I don't know why she passed. But, and I can't imagine that she missed me that bad. I'm not even going to go there. But um, for some reason she passed, but I do feel like she let me know. And I'm telling you what, and then after yesterday with meeting that fellow, just being put in that, it was like being guided by my higher force, my higher creator, being, letting me know that I got your back. Yes. So I've had so many dreams. I've had so many dreams that I remember, that I remember. Another dream I had was, um, there were two gals. I'll just briefly, there were two gals. And one of them, they had animals. I swear it was a pig. I told my friend about that. Um, you know, the, the fellow I told you about. And he goes, well, what's with the pigs? I go, I don't know. I don't know. But maybe it wasn't a pig. I don't know what it was. Maybe it's because I had that little pig that I showed you I bought. And anyways, but the one of the gals, they were like twins. One of the gals, I knew she left forever. And when I woke up, I thought, oh my gosh, I am transforming. There's part of me that is gone, which is a good thing. I mean, maybe it was a bad part. Well, I believe it is because I've allowed myself the time to be sad and grieve. I did a video about that. Well, how long do I have to grieve? So I'm wondering if what I'm feeling, I'm not grieving, but I wonder if what I'm feeling is that there's a little something missing still, a little something missing. Now, I want to read you this letter that somebody just sent me and it's from Summer Breeze. I love you, Summer Breeze. You are in tune with me. We are friends. Okay, let's say that. We are friends. And she says, Summer Breeze, Hey Lee, my comment is not relevant to this video, but I felt compelled to share an observation. She's been observing me. I think a lot of you have. Please don't take offense to this. I know sometimes I do. I've taken in the past offense, but that's only if you're going to make fun of me or something, you know. But you can be honest with me. You can tell me whether the cheese, I shouldn't be eating shredded cheese or I need to watch this type of food or whatever. I don't mind that. And you said, pardon my forwardness. We're friends. I had to agree when my friend commented that in your videos, you and Paul did not seem compatible in terms of energy and attitude. Well, that was a good observation. You're right, we weren't. But we made it work for a while. Your videos shine with your vivacious personality and positivity. It's kept me enjoying your channel. Thank you. Maybe a future video, which I'm doing right now, this is what really, I wanted to talk about this for so long. And it just, she kind of um, sparked me to talk about this. And we'll get it out, we'll get it out. A future video on how sometimes the nicest people can bring us down and drain our light, much like solar light needs sun, right? I thought of a play with words, soul. Are you look and seem so much happier? God bless. Okay, well, I wanted to address this because it really did make me think big time. And I want to share this because I think some of you have been through this or you're going through it right now or whatever. But this is a message I feel that is worthy to talk about. And Paul is the most wonderful person. Wonderful. So I want to mention, I did not fall in love with Paul's energy. I didn't fall in love with this energy. I fell in love with him. Yeah. So, and I still love him a lot. But, Ultimately, as time passes, energy does make a difference. It does. Because if I'm high energy and he is not, although in, in, in many ways he does have energy, it's just different. He's different. But my energy dictates other things. It's not just I'm energetic. I go to the gym and I have energy and I talk a lot and things. There's other things that go with it. 
And because he is just a little bit more low key, there's other things that go with that too. It's not just a, oh, I'm low key. Um, no, I don't, you know, no, there are, it entails more. Energy entails all these other things going on. Lower energy entails all these other things going on. And over time, can they work? I believe they can, but it takes a committed personalities. It takes that. Well, you have to be committed at some point, and I'm just gonna say that. You have to do that. Will it work? I believe it could, but you have to be committed in the fact that you have to take the good with the bad. I'm energetic, I'm a little bit more excitable, I'm a little bit more, and because I am high energy, that means I'm highly sensitive too, okay? Won't go into that subject, that's for a whole nother thing being, um, it, it's now considered a temperament being, it's called HSP, it's now considered to be a temperament that you're highly sensitive and not just sensitive, like, oh, you're my feelings. No, it's sensitive to smells and sounds and people's uh, attitudes and all kinds of things going on around you. You're highly sensitive to that. And you can get overstimulated easy. Whereas more of a laid back person, and then I have to get used to all that that entails. You know, he's a little bit more reserved. Um, he's a little bit more um, uh, just, happy to just be on this phone and do this and that, whereas I wanted a little bit more. Okay, we won't go into that, but I am going to mention that you're right, Summer, Breeze, <laughs> that that can make a difference. It can make you incompatible if you don't have the proper commitment, you know? Yeah, if you're not committed to it and you're not willing to take the good with the bad, no, it's not going to work. It, that is incompatibility. So, I wanted to mention that, that ultimately we go for a person who we're attracted to a person basically because for some reason we're attracted to them, whether it's from childhood trauma we're trying to work out or pheromones. I don't know what it is, but I was definitely attracted and I still am. I still do love him very, very much. I don't know if that'll ever go away. You let me know. Um, does that ever really go away? I think it subsides which has not, well, it has a little bit, but not totally. But I do know that if there's no commitment, then no, I can't, there's no, there's no hope. There's no hope. So I will let that dissipate. But in that, I am transforming. I, because of hurt and pain, and I'm sure he's hurt too. I'm sure he's, who knows what, I don't know what he's going through. I don't. Um, I prefer the no contact because it just, it's, it's too much for me right now. So if he may be going through, I hope he's going through a transformation too. I really do. And I want the best. I want the best for me. I want the best for him. And, um, maybe that's the best for Abby too. Yeah. She's moved on. Yeah. But isn't that sweet that she let me know? Isn't that sweet? She let me know that she was no longer there. Yeah. Wow. In order to feel that and know that, it takes moving into a higher realm, a higher frequency. Now, if you have a story to tell, let me know. If you disagree or agree, let me know. Um, if you enjoyed it, let me know. Um, I've been wanting to share what happened with that dream for a while now and some of the other dreams I've been having because I know you care about me and I know you've been following me and I know that my goal is to talk about things that matter. You know, not just, oh, look at this is the kind of spray bottle you should have, your, your minivan, you live in a minivan, drink your water, yeah. Um, these lights are great. Have lights going to No, I want to talk about the juice of life. What life really is all about. And it's about the heart, things of the heart. There's where I'm at. And I just, I look forward to my next revelation. <laughs> I really do. So this is going on long. I'm going to end it now and um, share this. If there's somebody in your life with family or friends, if there's somebody in your life that you feel like, wow, you need to hear this. 
And because of this, I left a very long message with my friend. And I told him, look, you're still having to deal with the breakup. You're just having to deal with it. So how about make sure that you deal with it properly. Cry when you need to cry and feel the pain that you need to feel. Don't just brush it off. And, it, and I believe he's in isolation too. If you're in isolation, use it to your best ability and be that butterfly and tra go into your cocoon and then transform. So till next time, yeah. Okay, Whew. yeah, I'm glad I got this off my chest. Hopefully this will be, I'll keep you posted, but hopefully this is the last time that I will need to talk about this. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. I love you. Bye.